<laughs> Y'all ready for this? What's the jock jams? Wasn't that what it was? I think so. Do you remember jock jams from back in the day? God damn, my mom had like all of those. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there is a whole fucking album called Jock Jams. Holy shit! Hell yeah! I think they did multiple. Yeah, they definitely yeah. did. They were basic. They were kind of like now. Oh. That's what I call music from back. Sorry, right, Jock Jams is the artist, not the album. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, hold on. Jock James apparently is listed as an artist. Everybody that, dang, dang. No, that's not true. Volume. Yeah, Jock James Volume 1. Okay. Here we go. Why Google has, well, because Google uses AI, that's why. Yeah, don't listen to it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Jock James Volume 1, Volume 2, Volume 3. How many fucking Jock Jams are there? The Space Jam theme is on one. <laughs> Jock, okay, so we got up to Jock Jams 5 and then Jock Jams the All-Star Jock Jams in tw- 2001. Hot Night Joe is on one. Let Me Clear My Throat is on one. Go through it. these. They are fucking fantastic albums. <laughs> I'm sorry. DJ Cool, Let Me Clear My Throat. One of the best fucking rat tracks of all I time. thought you were about to say bad. I was going to have some words with you. No, the best. Okay. I get so hype every time I hear this fucking song. <laughs> yeah, tell, like you go through this. Tell me you would not be like, I'm in. Let's let's lock it in. Let's work out. <laughs> This is what my mom listens to. Wait, you so. <laughs> Pump up the volume, man. You gotta lift up, lift up your. I don't know what the fuck. Next thing you need to work out more often, but <laughs> don't we anyway. all? I would back up and show my stomach, and then I remembered that I only have boxers on right now. No uh, what? I have all the space to walk around, only to about here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on, Hello bro. and welcome. People have streamed less. To another episode of Space Time Taco, I am your host, Chris, with... Nate. It has been... Dude, it's been a fucking time these two weeks that we've been off. Uh, (laughs) uh, uh, Let's see, how have you been the last two weeks? Anything big happen? Uh, (laughs) I mean, I've been mostly okay. I think... Did I miss a stream because of Blurred Con? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. You came back in time. You were at BlurCon oh, Cotton Home and we recorded about it. That was right. that was two two Sundays ago. That was a fucking journey. Why did I do that? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> you made a horrible mistake. I uh, think you see. Um, but anyway. <laughs> um No, so I was I did make it back in time. I think I already talked about BlurCon on a podcast. Yeah, yeah, that was that was the last episode we talked about BlurCon. No, I mean, I've been chilling for the most part. I'm I'm mad that it's been raining its ass off lately. I'm not, because it's cooler, slightly. I know you're not. I have a mode of transportation I very much enjoy that I cannot exactly enjoy in the rain. Well, you can, just more carefully. Well, I need, like, special gear to not be completely soaked from head to toe. I did ride home from work in the rain once because mm. there was no other option. Yeah. It was not fun. <laughs> Rain at 60 miles an hour feels like bullets, not rain. <laughs> Ooh, fun. Uh, you know what else doesn't feel great? <laughs> <laughs> I can take a guess. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know or follow me on social media, um, the day of last Thursday, not last, not this most recent Thursday, the Thursday before last, um, I was on my way to see the 3 o'clock showing of Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, which, if you want, you can check out the spoiler cast now. We just finished recording it. It'll be out later. You can get it on Patreon. We love you. Um, I don't know why I did this. Oh, no, I'm part of the Illuminati. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I meant to do the little, like, this thing. We love yes. you. Um, I got hit by a truck. Not me as in myself, my body. I would be a lot worse. Uh, That's all there is to it. But but my I'm now in I've been isekai'd. Um I haven't been, but Tengu, my my Ford Focus, uh sadly mm-hmm. was no longer with us. I'm very sad. I am actually very upset about it. Um that was my first car. I bought that car with my money, paid it off with my money, fully mine. And uh some guy not paying attention to a red light said, Fuck you. Um, I might cut this out. I don't know how this works. Insurance with insurance shit. Uh, <laughs> me saying so that part. You got part of it covered. <laughs> uh, but whatever. That has happened. I'm fine. I went to see a Deadpool later that night because I'm like, fuck you, universe. You're not making me miss my movie. Um, 
we're good now. Everything's fine. But it made for a a very um, interesting last weekend. Um, yeah. Well, now you got a new pony in the stable. I don't. Um, no. Never use that. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> fucking horse lover uh <laughs> you fucking horse lover hey man who's been to BronyCon? i'm gonna say that to every horse girl i see on dating apps from now on <laughs> stay away i'm telling you now stay the fuck away from them Wrong store. okay they, they just, all look just, like psychopaths just warning you no, they all look experience. like psychopaths and their families are probably are too in a particular way that i won't say on podcast. white yeah the bad kind like, yeah, <laughs> like, like really bad. <laughs> yeah. Like, like a reenactment of Get Out Bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna be like a reenactment of Glory or something like that. No. <laughs> they they give me those kinds of vibes, and as I've said many times, Get Out is one of the only horror movies in history that has ever scared me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you apparently saw other movies. I have seen other movies. So, uh, technically, we watched two, I will say. Uh, so, Kim had never seen Twister. I grew up fucking loving Twister. Twister was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Great I don't movie. know how many times I watched it. Um, we decided to watch it because I'm, I was excited to see the second one. One, because it was a sequel to a movie I loved as a kid. And two, I fucking love Glenn Powell. I think he's fucking great. Um <laughs> And I think people need to, you know, give him more, uh, I don't know, pay attention to the shit he puts out. Um, yeah. Is he like Oscar nominated, Oscar not or whatever level? No, but mm. I don't fucking like that shit anyway. No, um, he's, a, he's a good actor. He is, a, he is a goofy fuck. And I'm so glad that the first thing I ever recognized and noticed him in was Scream Queens. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, he's, he's been in a ton of stuff, but he's yeah. he's a pretty good actor. Uh, but yeah, we watch Twisters, still holds up to me, still love it, um, Kim also loved it, uh, because of that, got tickets, went to see Twisters the next night, and man, can I tell you, I still love this, I think Kim did too, um, but 100% up front, it's the same movie, uh, hmm. like, beat for beat, the storyline is twisted, certain character roles are swapped and such, um, for mm -hmm. instance, the um, but it's Helen Hunt. Good. Helen Hunt yeah. character is yeah. swapped out for Glenn Powell's character because uh, there's okay. a scene in the original where she's in the rain with a white t-shirt on. Um, mm -hmm. It's him in the rain with a white t-shirt on. At this time, I'm like, <laughs> good for you. Progression. Uh -huh. <laughs> just nods to the nods to what came before. <laughs> yeah, um, but it really is like you have that first the first. Uh, after the time jump, because the original movie had a time jump, this one has a time jump, shorter time jump. Um, but you mm -hmm. have that same, all right, we go for the first one, didn't work, go for the second one, ooh, something happens, weird. And it's it builds up the same way, up mm -hmm. to the end, where, um, I'm not going to spoil so it, but it, it's, it's, it feels good. It, even though it's the same thing, it's one of those, we respect um, the original, while doing this for a new group that has never would have never seen the original it's so okay. old <laughs> well i i assume that like you're saying it follows the plot beat for beat so the ending is something similar to that in twister right like i know what the ending of twister is what i'm saying is the ending of twister is similar to that <laughs> kinda so that's where the biggest diversion comes the biggest actually the biggest diversion is the main goal mm -hmm. of the main character um, okay. Obviously, to be honest, the the main goal of the original one was to get his wife to sign divorce papers <laughs> so he could get married. Um, and he just happened to remember how much he fucking loved chasing vol uh, volcanoes. That's a whole different movie. <laughs> chasing volcanoes. chasing, chasing uh, tornadoes. That's a hey. The I volcano love volcano movie. too. All right, disaster Them volcanoes movies. be moving. <laughs> Have you seen volcano with Tommy Lee Jones? They do. Uh <laughs> Moving. We're just gliding across across the earth. Um, no, I, I was gonna say the 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 motivation is slightly different. Um, there is a little bit of a role ver reversal where in the original one you have the ragtag 
your main character stays with the ragtag because that's her, that's their group. Um, yeah. In this one, the main group, and this is spoilers for the first like f- ten minutes of the movie, the main character's group, all but one of them die in the first experience. They had the first on screen uh, tornado. Um, yeah. Years later. She hasn't been doing it, hasn't been in the field, but the one remaining guy, okay, it took, it was five years. The guy went into the, into the military and got out of the military with prototypes of military tech that he was allowed to take with him. We're going to suspend belief <laughs> because obviously that's not something that normally happens and within a five year belief. span. Uh, <laughs> um, but basically he comes in like, hey, we need your help. Only you can do this kind of thing. And they are the more tech advanced. They are like super serious, have the funding, blah, 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 blah. Um, but eventually you realize, oh, wait, they are still the bad guys, technically. Because in the other one, they're not really bad guys either. They're just doing things for different reasons. Um, but they're just yeah. assholes in the original. This one, they're, yeah. well, they've made let's... poor choices. <laughs> Let's just put this in perspective. The original was made in 1996. Mm-hmm. So just a we're little. Talking, we're talking way far back. Um, yeah. And so, I mean, Twister was one of my favorite movies growing up because it's just one of those cool movies I watched as a kid, right? It was like cool, like store movie. It's got some side stuff in it. Mm-hmm. Like that was my kid brain, like vibing with this, <laughs> this particular movie. Um, Never really watched it again as an adult, but I still remember it pretty fondly because it is within that era of like mid to late 90s to early 2000s disaster movies that we got. Um, Now, mind you, Twister was very like localized disaster. And then, of course, directors eventually scaled up to we've got things like Independence Day. We're blowing up the whole fucking country. We've got Armageddon. We're blowing up the whole fucking world. (laughs) They aren't as fun. I never enjoyed those as much. Um I definitely enjoyed, like like I said, Twister, Volcano. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I will say, so I looked it up real quick, and it does look like, um, scientifically wise, they gave it like a solid B. The, mm-hmm. the, it says a decent grade for scientific accuracy, at least a solid <laughs> B. Um, which, hey, you know what? That's better than I did in a lot of school. Uh- <laughs> you know, it freaks me out seeing Bill Paxton that young. <laughs> it's so weird. And Philip Seymour Hoffman. I forgot he was in that. <laughs> yeah, that movie is an enti- it's basically an entire movie, a rest in peace. Um, yeah. Besides Helen Hunt. What the hell is Helen Hunt up to? Nothing. No idea. What was the last thing Helen Hunt did? Let's see. Filmography. Last <laughs> thing she did, 2021, how it ends, and then television-wise... 2024, she played a character in a show called Hacks. Yes. Winnie Landell in Hacks. Yeah. Oh, Blind Spotting. She was a recurring role as Rainy. Um, whatever. I've never seen any of this. Um, she's done a bunch of TV and like yeah. movies. <clears throat> well, that's like where she got. That's where she's most known for, I think, is television initially. Um, yeah. Because she was. There was a syndicated TV show that came on. Mad about you, yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess it makes sense. By the way, for any aspiring actors listening, like, you don't have to make it to the A-list to make money. <laughs> like, just have fun, please. Oh, the the amount... I There's an interview with... um, I cannot remember his name, but the actor that used, that played young Chris Rock on uh, Everybody mm-hmm. Hates Chris and now is on uh, Abbott Elementary... Uh, he mm-hmm. in an interview was talking about the fact that TV TV was the way to go. Um, mm-hmm. It's so much better and all that kind of shit, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, oddly enough, sorry, I I didn't think to put this together. Mad about you, Helen mm-hmm. Hunt was in Twister with Bill Paxton. Hmm. The other main character, main star, was Paul Reiser, who was mm-hmm. in a little movie called Aliens, also starring. No, Bill Paxton. I thought you were going to no, put that together. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's game over, I was, man. I was just listening to you. No. <laughs> the, the, no, like, he is game over, man. You just had like a... Uh, <laughs> game over, man. Game, game over, over, man. Um, which, I'm sorry to say, I still I don't like, I don't like aliens. It's okay. 
I'm yeah, I'm more I mean, of a horror than a, an action guy. I feel like Aliens was probably one of the more divisive movies during its time because it was such a switch from what Alien was. Hmm. Um, it plus, was plus it's made by that little shitty dude that loves blue people too much, right? Yeah, I, I mean, say little shitty dude. Thing. I think he's pretty tall. How tall is he? He's that particular director is in love with his like grandiose like let's have a war movie thing. They're the same height. I could take him. <laughs> Yeah, I could take a 69 year old man <laughs> <laughs> well I'm sorry guys Avatar 4 apparently is not happening <laughs> hey he said he's going to keep making Avatar till he dies didn't say well, when <laughs> you, got, you are the cutoff point Avatar movies end at Chris <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say I'm in no way threatening James Cameron I have no I have. I don't know I respect part of what you do not your blue people, but other things. Uh, <laughs> Terminator's cool. <laughs> let me look. Hold on. Let me look at. I feel like we've done this before. Let's let's do a quick James Cameron filmography. See if anything stands out in things that I actually am like. Hell yeah, James Cameron. Um, Jesus. Tell me you like the Terminator. Oh, of course, Piranha Two. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you know what? No, hold on. Jesus, he does not have that long of a filmography. Nope. That's crazy. Um, no, I don't like the Terminator movies. We've talked about this. Um, you don't even like, Termi- I like don't Terminator... I like action movies. Terminator 2. No. It's a classic. It's, yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, it is. No, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying I don't like it. I'm allowed to have opinions. Jeez. So you don't like the Terminator movies. No, no. Do you I, like True Lies? Uh, I don't think I've seen True Lies. That's the one with What's-His-Face, right? Okay. Oh, I, I wouldn't watch it because it's fucking yeah. Uh, no, the um, the abyss, the abyss. Okay, abyss, Titanic. Come here, we... <laughs> okay, no um, Titanic. Everything this man has made has been an action movie besides Titanic and the Abyss. Okay, and I mean well, the Abyss is too. You know, it's sci-fi. Did you like Alita? Because that's an action movie. Yeah, but he didn't direct that. Mm, says screenplay by he wrote it yeah that's the, i'm talking about him as a director okay. do you know how many people probably worked on that movie um a lot yeah uh and he can't get another one made uh <laughs> it fucking sucks and i'm pretty sure he gave up since he said all he's ever gonna do is avatar um it sucks so much i need someone to pick up that ip you believe me there's a lot of things like that i i wish would happen. I still have a special edition <laughs> fucking can of Arizona um, for Battle Angel Alita. <laughs> Dude, speaking of which, I could not find, I don't know if they've already released or if I just can't find uh, the Bando Stone Arizona. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wanted one so bad. I would do the yeah. same. They'd be just on the shelf and never touched. Um, yeah. Well, that's the thing is, I actually drank that Arizona. I just had the can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're like the guy that's like, yeah, I got this really rare box of Wheaties. The Wheaties were fine. They were okay. They didn't taste great. But I still got the box. It means yeah. nothing. It's worth shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> They're 99 uh, cents. Um <laughs> Unless you go to, yeah, depending on where you go, sometimes they're more. Yeah. I'm um, just waiting for all the Japanese stuff to come to 7 Eleven. For the what? The Japanese stuff to come to 7 Eleven. Oh, yeah. Let's it's see just how that goes. I mean, here's the thing I don't think most people know this still. Like, 7 Eleven Japan owns all of 7 <laughs> Eleven. Like, everywhere. <laughs> Stop trying to. It was me, you motherfucker. Sorry, I opened up a thing and it's like, <laughs> hey, somebody tried to log into your account. And I'm like, I did. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, anyway. Yeah, Twisters. Great. Love it. Highly recommend it. If you love the first one, go see it. If you've never seen the first one, go see it. Um, as a bonus, specifically for many people I know out there, and including, da- or, uh, including Nate, um, one of the supporting cast, do you know who it is? Katie no. M. O'Brien. Really? Yeah. I saw that fade. Look, he smiled. Um, everybody loves Katie O'Brien. She's amazing. Fantastic. Um, yes. Oh, there was a guy played by James Paxson. Or James Paxson. Uh, 
Bill Paxton's son in here. Hmm. I did not know that. Cool. I learned thing. And for some reason, Paul Shears in the movie at, for like a single scene. And it makes no sense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I just, I'm looking at the cast and that popped up again. Oh, it also, weirdly, it I couldn't tell because of how he looks in the movie. Um, Brandon Pirie, 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 I'm bad with names, um, was in the movie, was the best friends with Glenn Powell's character, ca- character, character, um, <laughs> character um <laughs> who is angel from nope uh the guy that works as the not best buy um yeah yeah did not recognize it but I, one of my friends online was talking about the fact that it was he's uh i can't remember who it was they said something about like how funny it was or how like it brought them back to him looking up in the sky kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> um but no highly recommend it go see it it's out now yeah do it. Do the thing. Um, what do you? Cause look, this is all me. Have you not been watching, reading, or listening to anything? I haven't been watching much. That's the thing. Is a lot of what I've been doing is rewatching things. Um, oh. So, like, I'm trying to get through all of the near anime, the near automata anime. There's a um, near anime. I did not know. Yeah, there's a near automata anime. Um, it's called One Point One or V One Point One A. Um, and it follows, like, it basically is a way for you to experience the plot if you don't want to play near Automata. Like, I will admit, I like the game. It's a very long fucking game if you're trying to get all three endings. Um, but, um, no, it's a, it's a competent anime. I like it a lot. Um, it's worth watching, especially if you just want to be there. They do these amazingly adorable little and funny little puppet shows at the end of each episode that goes over one of the endings of the actual games mm. <laughs> or one of the ending, one of the actual endings of the game, because the game actually has, I believe a full 26 endings because it's one for every letter of the alphabet. Um, and you can trigger them in really silly ways. Like for example, Tubi has a self-destruct mode. Um, that's where you get her to blast her skirt off basically. Jesus. <laughs> but if you do that while on the base station, uh, the base station is in space, so you explode the entire station when you do it, and that just leads to a game over immediately. Um, <laughs> so, just some really silly endings in the game, but I enjoy the anime for taking time to betray all those to get you through the story without having to go through the game if you don't want to. Um, turns out that both near games are actually connected to each other. Didn't know that before watching this show. Um, hmm. Which explains the presence of a meal being in near Automata. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely worth worth checking it out. Um, it's probably going to get me to eventually play near Replicant as well, which is a remake of the original game. Um, and then play through Automata and finish it. But yeah, cool. Um, other than that, I have not, I really can't say I've watched a lot. Um, as far as reading something, I, I will recommend this because I actually picked it up at BlurCon. Um, and I let me just look up the artist real quick so I can actually credit him for this. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. Um, <clears throat> this is from Massive Publishing. Wood Comics, C. David Crownson. Portland Ellis. Okay. Yeah, so um, this is a comic book I picked up. It's actually, in this case, it would be considered a trade because they have released these as individual issues before. Um, but it's called Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I picked this up because I remember coming across like in passing on social media one time and thought, hey, that sounds like a cool premise. Um, and it is much cooler than I thought, at least for the few pages I've read so far. Um. But uh, this is by writer David Crownson, who I believe actually signed my book at BlurredCon, and the artist and concept artist is Cortland Ellis. Cortland Ellis. Hmm. Um, but it is a story, you know, back in the slave times, the budding Underground Railroad, where um, it turns out that a lot of, like, the white slave people and slave catchers are all vampires. <laughs> um 
And when the slaves escape, they don't just like hunt them in the sense like, Hey, we're hunting you to bring you back. They like hunt, hunt them. Like you would imagine evil vampires would. Mm-hmm. And Harriet Tubman in some way, somehow has two katanas and a bunch of knowledge of how to fucking kill these things. <laughs> Sounds about right. Wow. I've seen this guy's mm-hmm. artwork before. Sorry. I pulled him up and I'm like, that sounded familiar. Yep. Um, if you want to get some issues of it digitally, I believe you can get those through massive comics, um, is where those are sold. But, um, his physical book, I don't know exactly where you can get it out outside of conventions right now. It's probably up on his website somewhere. I, just I think it. certain comic shops do carry it. I have, I believe I've seen it. I, I think I've actually seen it at uh, third eye and possibly even, um, mm-hmm. collector's corner. Uh, okay. Well, he also does have some variant comp. One of them is the Kill Bill style, which was a convention exclusive. So you can get that cover as well, but that is a whole lot more expensive because you can get, let's see. There's one for 60 bucks, which is the foil cover, and then you can get the metal one. These actually may just be prints, I think. He's the yeah. founder of Kingwood Comics. Well, okay. one's metal. You can get that for like, I think, 90 bucks. Um, apparently something here says soon to be an original series on Disney plus. That will be interesting. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, definitely worth, worth a look. I'm enjoying it. Um, nice thing to get through. Okay, you so... have something here on the list that I'm very much interested in, but have not seen. <laughs> so I, I put it on here because I've only watched one episode so far. Uh, actually maybe, a little bit of episode two. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, yeah, a little bit of episode two. Uh, Batman Cape Crusader is new animated series, obviously, about Batman. Um, this is the first Batman animated series after uh, Kevin Conroy's passing. Um, it is obviously definitely not him. Uh, it's Hamish Linklater voicing him, um, which... <laughs> is an okay voice. I feel like he's trying to be Kevin Conroy too much, trying to put on the same kind of sounding voice or whatever to him, um, which isn't doing much for me. But the reason why I want to bring it up in general was because, to be honest... All right, so let's get back a little bit. Uh, Hold on. I want to make sure I get everything correct in what I'm saying here, Uh, because I'm pretty sure I know certain things, but I wasn't 100% sure... Yes, a uh, series developed by Bruce Tim. Uh, Bruce Tim is one of the two creators, main creators of uh, the original Batman animated series. Um, he's the one that did all the character designs. You can thank him for uh, Harley Quinn. Yay. Um, so, a lot of excitement behind this. A lot of excitement because it's a lot of people involved in the original, people that grew up loving the original. And with the ability to be a little bit more mature because it was no longer on regular television, it's an Amazon Prime show. Still very confused that it's an Amazon Prime show and not a, <laughs> you know, a Max original since they fucking own DC. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, we already know how well they do with handling any of their own properties. Yeah. Um, stylized. It's very out of time, um, more like the gangster kind of 40s, 60s vibes, um, but you never really know, but the, in general, the style is a little bit, made to look a little bit older than um, the uh, animate series. Not the same universe, completely different universe. Um, in the mm-hmm. first episode, you're introduced to This World's Penguin, uh, who is voiced by Mini Driver, um, and she like puts on a show on the Iceberg Lounge, which is just a float, a, a yacht kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I don't want to say it's bad, but it just didn't grab me in any way. Something about the animation feels off. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. I I don't know if they're trying to recapture what it looked like. So the animation is being forced to look less than it can be. Um, There's just something about it that just doesn't, doesn't 
mesh right with me. Um, am I going to try and watch more? Probably. Just because I want to get to some other characters. Um, one of my favorite lesser-known comic characters, Onomatopoeia, is in this. Uh, <laughs> who was created by Kevin Smith. Um, he was previously in Kevin Smith's run on Batman with the Widening Gyre and... Oh, Cacophony. I could not remember the name of that other one. Uh, which I own both, and I think I have like the first issue signed by Kevin Smith for both of them. Um, mm. But in general, it, it you know I, I'll, I'll get around to watching it. I'm just not as excited about it as I was at one point. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll chime in with something else, because this actually jogged my memory here. Um, this is in the same vein of DC stuff, um, being on strange platforms. Um, I watched uh, some of the Suicide Isekai, Suicide Squad Isekai. How is that? Not great. Is it ridiculous in a bad way? It kind of is. What I'm saying is, like, it can be fun in certain moments where you... I mean, the way that, like, power sets work in this new world and everything like that, that's kind of cool, right? Mm. Um, it can be funny at times, too. But a lot of it feels forced. And when I listened to the dub of it, it sounded like everybody who was dubbing their character was in different recording booths at different times. It's the dialogue seems like nobody actually worked together well, because to be fair. That does happen with a lot of dub. I mean, it happens, but normally you have the track in the background, like playing the voice so you can mm -hmm. interact. Right. In this case, it sounds like none of them heard each other before they started dubbing this. Ugh. And so a lot of the delivery is like, I wouldn't even say it's wooden. People like to use the word wooden a lot. It's not wooden because it's not flat. Um, what it is, is choppy. And a lot of times I find characters saying stuff during a scene that just doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, the way that Harley talks in this show is, it's just nonsensical. Like it doesn't, the way they've characterized her just doesn't, it, it doesn't fit. Now I'm saying this watching two episodes. Maybe it gets better later on. I don't know. But um, I will say the depiction of the Joker absolute miss way the fuck off target um, i don't know what the fuck they were thinking with that design um, <laughs> he, he, but um harley looks good in this show all the other characters look good in this show unfortunately deadshot got stuck with the killmonger cut <laughs> sorry i just oh yeah i saw that i also just remembered that for some reason clayface is muzan from demon slayer yeah uh, <laughs> is that explained in any way Nope. Okay. Um, was he that way before the... he comes to the other world? He is that way before. <laughs> like he looks a certain way before he comes. Like he's very like Bishonen style with flowy yeah. hair and so on so so forth. Um, the way that they've characterized Clayface in this, he's probably the best character out of this whole cast so far. Besides King Shark, we always love King Shark. Um, Hell yeah! Is he yeah. is an honest to goodness otaku in this like in the regular like DC world? <laughs> Um, so when he gets transported, everyone thinks like, oh, it's just a big act. haha, ha, Very funny. And then he realizes like, holy shit, I'm actually like in one of the manga I read. <laughs> <laughs> That's and he awesome. just runs with that. <laughs> but of course, the, the plot, the premise for the show was actually kind of ridiculous, too, because it's Amanda Waller using some kind of magic being who we suspect is um, the sorceress to or the enchantress. Sorry. Um, to um, unlock a portal to another world so she can send in the Suicide Squad to scout it out and basically destabilize this other world so that way she can move in and take its resources. Um, but I don't know, man. Um, I'm willing to give it more of a shot. It just, it's it's not great right now. <laughs> How many episodes have you watched, you said? I said two. Just two? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's funny that we both, we both have watched... Uh, newer in some way anticipated highly anticipated uh dc series animated series mm -hmm. and um i I'll, I'll be honest um i gave uh crisis on infinite earths the new the new multi-part movie a chance mm -hmm. um it sucks yeah. i don't know what happened DC used to be known for, yeah, live action fucking all over this place, barely anything making it in a way that we enjoyed it, um, besides 
uh, the CW shows, which, yes, they were CW shows, but they were enjoyable shows for the most part. Um, Mm -hmm. But animation-wise, DC has been knocking out of the park endlessly. I don't think there isn't a bad point in their animation. Um, Up until now, I feel like it's been consistently just not holding up to what we've had for the past 30 years. (laughs) I I really believe a large part of it is that ever since we started this whole new live action DC thing is Warner brothers is just dropping the bag over and over again. HBO is dropping the bag. Um, They just really don't, they do not care about this IP. They have no passion for it. Um, To them, it's a cash cow to be milked and Mm -hmm. they're kind of done milking it at this point. So they're like, we will put as little effort into keeping this around as possible. Um, this is kind of like the release of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5. This is just for the, for the sake of keeping the IP in-house at this point. <laughs> um, and I'll be, I was going to say, as we know, moving forward, uh, everything, unless otherwise stated, I think, is part of the DCU. We're just going to call it the mm-hmm. DCU. They dropped the Extending Universe. I think it's now just going to be called the DCU. Um, whatever the fuck they're going to go with. Uh so you have animated things that are canon to what is going to be the live action. We got our first trailer at Comic Con for um, Creature. Is it Creature? What is it? Creature Crusaders? I cannot fucking remember. Some Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos. That sounds right. Commandos. Yeah, Creature Commandos. Got our first tr- uh, trailer for that. It looks mm-hmm. interesting. Um, I'll probably give it a shot. Uh, just cause I like animation. Um, and I'm, I'm, I am excited. I'm excited, but worried. Are you talking about the Sergeant? Um, I was forgetting his name. Sergeant. He's a robot in like old, old time army gear. GI robot. That's it. Oh, well, then it's not the same character. Who do you think it was? Very similar. I forget the name of the comic, but I bought a comic a while ago. We were actually at Third Eye together when I bought this. I just saw it on the rack, and it was a soldier going through, like, a robot soldier going through, like, Vietnam times, because this is an alternate timeline where they had built robot soldiers by this point to support troops. And it's kind of tragic. He, like, watches all his squad mates die and, like, kind of gains sentience later on. It's it's a sad story. <laughs> I, I forget what it's called, the though. Fuck did you include that? Junkyard Joe? Junkyard Joe, Yeah, yes. That was an image comic. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. Just wanted to see what that was. Um, yeah, I am, I, I am apprehensive, but also excited for whatever the fuck James Gunn is doing. I'm worried that James Gunn is being not in charge of too much, but having to handle too much on his own. The way it sounds is that he is... He is the Kevin Feige, but also directing a lot of things directly and putting his fingers in directly more than Kevin Feige does with the MCU. Uh, yeah. So that worries me a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, it's a question of, for him, it's a question of, like, is this a choice or does he really have no choice in the matter? Is this something, is this a role he's kind of been shoved into? Yeah. Um, because taking on production and directing at the same time is, that's a nightmare. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. DC, we hope you get back to where we think you deserve to be. Um, treat yourselves better than you have been. <laughs> really, yeah. I wish DC could somehow get away from being owned by a company like Warner Brothers Discovery. Um, we all do. Yay. Uh, anyway, uh, beyond that, haven't really watched much more. I have been reading the fuck out of Monster which has very quickly, I'm not done yet, I'm, as I have noted, uh, 134 out of 162 chapters, I'm very close, I might end up mm-hmm. staying up too late reading it, um, <laughs> but it has very quickly and very easily become one of my all-time favorite manga. Uh, it is so well written. Um, I, like, I, <laughs> I went ahead, I already was planning on buying all of the Pluto manga, because I watched the show and I fucking loved it, and I recommend it to everybody, whether you're an anime fan or not. Um, 
I have one volume of that. I'm like, I'm going to get all this. And I preemptively added all of 20th Century Boys or 21st Century Boys. I think there's two different series. Um, I'm like, I'm just going to read all of your stuff. You are immediately one of my favorite writers. I am excited to uh, continue to enjoy everything. Um, yeah. What was it, where was I going with that? Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful fucking emotional as fuck story um very dark too uh on the other hand <laughs> i didn't put it on here um something else has ended that i have also finished reading and mm-hmm. the internet is very divided on how it ended and i don't care because i enjoy how it ended uh yeah. after i don't know how long a decade hold on uh huh uh huh uh-huh. Let's see, how long has this been going? Yeah, after a decade of running from July 7th to August 5th, because it's August 5th in Japan, um, Mm -hmm. My Hero Academia is done. Um, Yeah, Uh, people are really, like I said, people are really split on how it ends. I really Mm -hmm. enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was good. I think it makes sense. The people that are like, blah, 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 blah. uh, (laughs) I feel like... No, there's. I don't want to say it out loud, but there's people people that are arguing about a certain specific thing that I'm mm. like, have you forgotten what was said at the beginning of this series? Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I, blah, I enjoyed blah, 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 it. Official it, review. What's that? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Official review. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, no, I was going to say, My Hero has never been, like, my all-time favorite or one of my favorite series. Uh, it mm. has been an enjoyable series, I'd say, beginning to end. Sure, there's some like down points or weaker arcs, um, but overall it is a, uh, it's not mid. Fuck anybody calling it mid. <laughs> it's it's it slightly mid. it's slightly above mid. Um, it's above average, and I I come to my hero Aka not for the plot, not for the emotional beats, not for any of that. I come to it for the fucking character designs. <laughs> exactly. I was gonna say Hir- Hir- Horikoshi. Um, I love his artwork. Uh, I think he's really good artist. Character design wise, I really enjoy it. Um, you can put somebody that he draws in a different outfit, and I can tell who that character is still, um, which is not not everybody can do that. Um, it's also just he comes up with interesting hero concepts too. Like, I mean, fucking best genus of all heroes. Like, come on, <laughs> who would have come up with that? <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> There's some. I'm just thinking about the random things. You know how many people are fucking thirsting over the big orca guy? Um, oh yeah, gang orca. Like, first of all, like, hold it. This is a character like you would think would be a villain, but no, he's just an orca who happens to be a mob boss who is also a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> it's it is not a like... really fun world. I think that's what it is. I like the world that my hero is built in, or that has been built into it. Um, because it makes glad- sense, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Yes. I'm just glad that the world doesn't have any wars because it's like with Bakayo's power set, like instant military application. That's the thing. the <laughs> The way it, it is not an idealized, idealized world, mm-hmm. but as close to there aren't wars because of this. Um, yeah. like the closest thing to a war is what happens in this series. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. No, it was great. I thought it was. I thought it was a good ending. Um, as somebody that hasn't had many series, now I think about it, most of the manga that I read has not been finished. Um, I'm gonna finish one. Uh, one Piece. We got some time. Uh, hmm. It's not one of my favorites, but it's definitely up there. It's it's not a lackluster ending, in my opinion. Um, I think it it is an, an earned and an earned ending in a. Uh, word and i can't think of it mm. just remember this is coming from somebody that fucking hates everything that happens in attack of titan attack on titan <laughs> after the time skip <laughs> um and it retroactively makes me not give a shit about everything that happens before the time skip uh, <laughs> i don't know it's just me personally uh yeah keep on keeping on we got one more season i think they're this current season that's going on anime wise because um, mm-hmm. there are a lot of anime only that are realizing, oh, 
I only have how much left? Because uh, yeah. <laughs> we're in, they're in the final arc. Um, I don't know true. how. I, I really don't know how they're doing two seasons out of it, but it might be like a shortened season. And it's, then It's a whole lot of pacing. They, yeah. I'm sorry to say, but the this season of My Hero Aka is not paced well, especially during the beginning. We're in kind of the end of it now, and it's still not paced that well. Really, to the point where a lot of things that don't need to be drag <laughs> be like dragged out are getting drug out just to extend runtime. Yeah. The whole like I won't s- spoil anything, but the whole situation with Aoyama that's like a good five episodes to get through, and it's not fun. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Because it's like, they know, here's the thing, is like, they know what they're going to do by like the third episode, and then it just keeps getting like set up, and they keep getting more intricate with it, and it's like, you are explaining this into the fucking ground, just go do it, please. (laughs) Yeah. Man, so that, and that is an issue where we're getting with some of these shows that won't take time off. And I get it. I understand the aspect of if we don't, if we keep going, or if we don't keep going, we lose that momentum and people don't care anymore. Um, I'll be honest. Like, one, we've talked about the fact that, in general, uh, anime has gotten slightly better by the fact that it isn't doesn't have to be continuous. We have seasons. We have breaks. There's a reason why current seasons of One Piece feel so much better. Mm-hmm. Um, even though we are getting really, we are catching up pretty fast, I will say. Um, but well, I kind of wish we would bring back filler arcs. <laughs> good, well, everyone, good filler arcs. Everyone likes a good filler arc. The The problem is with something like One Piece, because I'm still in the early stages of it, is watching that is painful to me because yeah. it's like, we don't need to drag this plot thread out like an infinite number of times to fill up gaps, but I realized that they had to do that because it was week to week. It was serialization. Yeah. Now that they're in seasonal, yes, they can take a breather. They can focus more on the quality of the show. You know, you can add working. things. You can change the pacing in a way to expand on what we don't get to see. Some of this yeah. most recent season, I'm not spoiling anything, but there are fights that begin and sometimes end before that's even shown. You see the mm-hmm. like, oh hey, such and such is about to attack so and so. And then the next chapter, it's already done. Because why would we need to watch that? We know that this person has the ability to take them out. No problem. Mm -hmm. But in an anime, that's so much more fun to show than tell. Yeah. Well, that is... That's something they can do. I'm also a sucker for anything that's anime original stories. I don't think they're ever going to get away with that with One Piece, but... (laughs) No. Um, Uh, Although he will... I will say Oda has mm -hmm. said there are some things... In in this is in everything. He will add or expand or mention things in the other versions of the series. Like mm-hmm. the anime has some stuff that's hinted at that isn't hinted at in the manga, but because you do both, you're like, oh, oh. Uh, and even mm-hmm. uh, from what I've heard, the live action is going to have some of that kind of hinting at too. So that makes sense. And I mean, beyond that, if we take a look at shows like um, Demon Slayer, which has always been seasonal since its inception, right? Um, They take breaks, sometimes very long breaks between seasons. Um, But that show is still running strong. The last part of this show is going to be broken up into two parts anyway. So it is... I mean, we have to. It's Thankfully, the show is over. The the manga is over, so they can just get through it, but... It's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's dense, but to Ufotable's credit, what keeps people coming back is the fact that it is just gorgeous to look at all the time. I mean, this this show drips style. Like It is everywhere to the point where it's like, I wanted a fucking Haori. I forget the fucking guy. Water dude. His Haori. Um, I wanted his just because... It looks fucking cool. It's fucking asymmetrical. It's got a cool pattern on one side. Mm-hmm. It's just plain red on the other side. Like, that shit just looks cool. That would just be a cool thing to wear around. <laughs> but it's gorgeous, and that's why it keeps going. Instead, but, you have a Tundra Road sweater. Yeah. I, that was not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> it's not intentional. Uh, I just like oversized sweaters. <laughs> 
anyway. Um, hey, anyway, we were on to say about monster. <laughs> no, I was going to say because I moved on to my hero, but also nothing more to say about my hero because I don't want to get into spoilers. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what I do have something to say, and uh, I already have two Let's Plays cut and ready to to release. Um, with more to come, um, a ranger has finally co- released. Uh, I have received a code uh, gifted by Pop Agenda, the um, publisher. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Just want to state that before I say anything else. Does not affect how I feel about games. I like games how I like games. Doesn't fucking matter. Um, play the demo before. I actually recorded from beyond the demo moving forward. Because you can still play the demo. It's the first like level to boss fight. Basically just the tutorial of it. Um, it is such a fun game. Uh, it is such an interesting puzzle storytelling idea. Uh, where you are shifting the world around... Um, I don't know. I don't want to like, like, I don't know how to describe it. I, it really is like, just watch the gameplay or go try it out yourself. Um, there's just something about it that is so fun to just, even when you fuck up, you're like, Oh, I, I see what I did. Or you're like, Oh, if I did that, I could have done it faster. Kind of thing. Um, this, this game does look cool and I'm glad you're enjoying it. I can tell you right now, I would absolutely hate playing this. Why? <laughs> it's slide puzzles, and out of all the puzzles in the entire fucking universe, I hate tile slide puzzles. I hate them so much. <laughs> I'll be honest, it is a much more simplified version. Try I, I try the demo. Right. Just try it. Just try the demo. <laughs> See if you like it. Um yeah, I, I don't think it's that bad. I, I also don't like slide puzzle games, but I don't like slide puzzles because they're usually so much more limiting. Um, mm-hmm. This one, this one, I feel like it's, it's a little bit more wiggle room with some of the puzzles. Uh, and other ones, that's like there's one way to do it, but it's an obvious one way kind of thing. I don't, mm-hmm. know. I don't know. Except for the squirrel. I don't know what the fuck to do with the squirrel. I'll deal with the squirrel later. <laughs> Fucking prick. Um, the squirrel's got him done. Fuck that squirrel. Uh, <laughs> really, that's all I've I've been playing around with. Besides, um, I'm still fucking around within. Uh, I'm still messing around with with Minecraft mod packs, trying to find one that I think we all would like. I found one, and I know we I mentioned it on the last one. I just one I got to figure out how we're gonna do the the uh, server. Uh, I might set it up on Taco Tower One. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully it works. I don't know how port. For- I don't know things. I might have mm-hmm. you come over and help. Do you know port forwarding? <laughs> port forwarding. I'm sure I can figure it out. Yeah, hey, we'll figure it out. If we, we get three people over here working together, one of us will get annoyed enough that we walk away, or two of us will get annoyed <laughs> away, and then the last one will figure it out. Um, that's how I look at it. Somebody will eventually figure it out. Uh, besides that, though, what have you been playing, Nate? Um, weirdly enough, in you can go back in our old podcast history and I can tell you, you can hear me tell you about how dog shit this anime is. Um, but I picked up sword art online, fatal bullet. Fucking why? Up. Fucking why? So <laughs> I picked this up at the same time that I picked up kingdoms of Amalur re reckoning on sale because I fucking love kingdoms of Amalur and I never played through it all. Um, but, um, I got this game on sale it was there, like, super cheap. I think I paid, like, maybe four bucks for it. Um, I picked it up because I remember a conversation I had in the past when I was going in on Sword Art Online again in one of these discussions that was having with a friend, and they mentioned Fatal Bullet and said, yeah, it's actually a pretty fun game. Um, so I picked it up, and I've been playing it, and I haven't stopped playing it. I thought you were going to be like, this game fucking sucks. <laughs> no, I will say by no measure is it like a great game. This is not like a knock your socks off experience. Um, but just one of the actually like super bad things about this game is there are times where you go back to sort of the like hub area and you have to do a lot of talking to a lot of characters. And these scenes are not short. Some of them are fun because it's written in a way like you're making connections with people, you're making more friends, so on and so forth. That's kind of all this anime has been about for a long time. Um, 
th- th- specifically one guy making a lot of friends who are not guys. Um, <laughs> but um, okay, it is uh, the game itself is just a competent third person shooter with some light RPG elements in it. Um, it takes me back. The way the game plays takes me back to games like Dot Hack. Um, the original Dot Hack series, oh. where it's kind of like you're not really playing an MMO, but the game immerses you enough to feel that way. Um, and I, I mean, I've been having fun with it. It's fun. It's in the one sort of IP that I enjoy from Zora Online, which is Gun Gale Online. And when I finally found out that they put off the, um, they put some of the spinoff like equipment from Gun Gale or Sword Art Online Alternative, I believe it is, or whatever it is, it was a spinoff of the whole Gun Gale Online saga. Mm -hmm. That is much better than Sword Art is. (laughs) Um, But I found some stuff there, up to the full costume of the main character and some costumes from the side characters. So I can have, like, a full pink, like, tactical outfit and a little pink bunny hat as well, and it's adorable. Um, (laughs) And I found out I could change the colors of my weapons so I can even have a pink P90 if I want to. And that's the whole character right there. (laughs) She wanted to buy a P90 not because she knew anything about it. She just wanted a gun that was cute. And that was the cutest gun for her. (laughs) Um, She calls it P-Chan in the anime. (laughs) P-Chan. All right. Um, But, uh, no, it's a, like I said, totally competent third-person shooter with some light RPG elements to it. Um, parts of it can get difficult, but you know why it got difficult. And that's usually because you're massively under, under leveled, whatever you're trying to take on. Um, but other than that, I mean, I'm having fun with it. Do I recommend other people play it? Probably not. Not if you've, not if you're a sort of online fan, online fan honestly, yeah. that's very much what this game was made for. Um, with those people in mind, I mean, even in the character customizer, like the first few hairstyles are just all character hair from anime characters from characters in the sort of online anime. <laughs> um, because I was scrolling through, I was like, wait a minute, that's that person's hairstyle. And that's that person's hairstyle. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's fun. I, I'm enjoying it for the most part. If you want like a silly run and gun third person shooter, sure. Um, there's probably better ones out there. I'll be perfectly honest. But this game definitely was made for sword art fans. <laughs> well, hey, speaking of shooters, uh, Valorant is on Xbox right now. Yeah. Game Pass. I, I can't get down with Valorant. Oh, really? No. It's the thing is is like it's I know how it plays. It's very much like another Counter Strike. It's got some cool abilities in there for characters, but I, I can't do the whole Counter Strike thing again. I don't know. I, I just have to come to terms with the fact that I am bad at first person shooters in a way where I'm probably never going to enjoy them. <laughs> Jesus. How long has she been playing? Day five. What? Holy crap. Sorry. I. <sighs> uh, streamer um, is currently doing a subathon. Uh, Black Crystal. I don't know if mm-hmm. you've heard of Black Crystal. Um, but she is currently on day five of her subathon. Um, Your girl, take a nap. I don't know how much she slept. Because there was a stream highlight I was watching earlier of uh, some of the old AH AH crew getting together to play Raft, and she was talking about she just hit, there's a moment where she hits 24 hours. Uh, I'm Mm -hmm. like, oh, cool, I wonder when this happened. Didn't know it was currently happening. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So shout out to BK. Uh, You hopefully will be done and sleeping a lot uh, by the time this comes out. Um, But if uh, if not, also just go, go sub to BK if you aren't subbing to us. Yeah, it's um, good to have sub goals, but your sub goals are not worth your health. <laughs> well, uh, so BK it used to be part of Achievement Hunter. Um, yeah. So uh-huh. obviously, you know, sometimes you have to now, unfortunately, to yeah, money, fucking money. <laughs> I think she'll be fine. Yeah. Hopefully. Um. Anyway, where was I going next? You know what? Let's let's do some the quickie quickie newses, uh, and then I don't know. I really let's make this the big news. I'll be honest. Um, so we have had some unfortunate news recently. Um, I mean, some people might think it's unfortunate; others no. Uh, but just this past week, GameStop has fully shut down Game Informer. Um, Game Informer has been part of our lives 
since 91. Holy fucking shit. Um, I I didn't realize it was that long. Yeah, they were the longest running gaming magazine in the U.S. Um, But basically, GameStop uh, shut them down. No one can access any of the site. They are no longer able to access any of their old work. Um, They are all very incredibly talented people that need jumps, and hopefully other places can pick them up. Um, earlier sure this year, somewhere that yeah. Um, earlier this year, they actually uh, just changed to a new subscription model, um, and it was being pushed on multiple different plat or multiple different uh, groups and, and streams and stuff that I follow and pay attention to. Um, mm-hmm. So I was kind of like, oh, good, they're moving over to this, so it can be like a hey, f- this is focus for the people that want it need it kind of thing not hey uh, you know GameStop if you do our subscription service blah 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 our membership service um, I think it might have still been part of that in some way not 100% sure um, but yeah uh, they put out a notice saying Jesus fucking Christ after 33 thrilling years of bringing you the latest news, reviews, and insights from the ever-evolving world of gaming, it is with a heavy heart that we announce the closure of Game Informer. From the early days of pixelated adventures to today's immersive virtual realms, we've been honored to share this incredible journey with you, our loyal readers. While our presses may stop, the passion for gaming that we've cultivated together will continue to live on. Thank you for being part of our epic quest, and may your own gaming adventures never end. Um <laughs> Now, like, some people may not have that connection with Game Informer. Um, I know in certain cases it always felt weird to have a game news publication, physical publication, uh, in the time of digital news and in instant reporting, 24-hour news cycle kind of thing. Um, And they were moving to that. They had moved to that. We still got cool magazines that were a little bit different and more, like, bigger pieces than just hey this is what's happening in the gaming world um mm-hmm. but it, it is it's sad to see it go after like i said fucking 33 it's only two years younger than us nate exactly but beyond that the thing is is so for all the people complaining about the way games publication goes now right is that oh it's paid off and game journals are shit and blah 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 and so on and so forth and no they write that's the same true. articles yeah <laughs> or they you know they all write the same articles at the same time that's just they got to make clicks. Like that's what they got to do. Yeah, we're in a twenty-four um, hour news cycle. I mean, if you look yeah. up any of the news about uh, Deadpool and Wolverine or any interv- anything that's talking about Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman right now, it's mm-hmm. not from one-on-one interviews for the most part. It's from the lie detector test that they do or the uh, Hot Ones episode that they did together. Quotes from that mm-hmm. are being pulled, and entire articles are being written about that by mm-hmm. everyone. <laughs> well, the what what I'll say is for for all of that bitching about it and for you know I'll admit I collected Game Informer for a long time I fell off after a while um, because it always came attached with the pro subscription to GameStop. Yeah. Um, Game Informer was a quality publication through and through, one hundred percent. They are kind of the people that standard standardize the seven is seven is a passable game thing. Um, but when it came to like really writing in-depth previews and reviews of games, Game Informer kind of stood in a class of its own in that realm. Um, there are times where like I was thinking about picking up a game and I would read about it in Game Informer and mm-hmm. remember all the things in that article, and that would convince me like, is this a game I want to buy or not, or do I not want to buy it? Um, Versus the way that we get game fee- game reviews now, which is a whole lot of, like, right before day one, up until the embargo is lifted, some YouTuber post a video about it. And they never really cover the entire game because they haven't had time to play the whole thing. Um, but Game Informer had people who would go to publishers and developers and sit in dev rooms with people and talk to them about what they were really working on for their game. And so you just got insights that you were not going to get anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Um And their covers are, I'm sorry, their covers are fucking legendary. I have a poster of their Mass Effect cover. Oh, wow. (laughs) It is, their covers are fucking great. Um, And and it's sad that it's gone. I'm sure someone has an archive out there. I will sail seven seas to find that archive. But um, (laughs) yeah, it's, it's, it was worth every penny that I spent on it. And it's sad to see it go. 
sorry, I'm also looking at uh, the fact that it looks like uh, the CEO of GameStop, uh, Ryan Cohen, is a massive uh, Cheeto supporter. Oh. Yeah. I'm not surprised. They're, they're headquartered in Grapevine, Texas. So. I was going to say, he's also fucking rich, of course. Why would he support anybody but the guy that's like, I really only care about rich people. Um, yeah. But no, sucks. I wish everybody the best. Um, like Nate was saying, very talented group. Uh, I'm sure a lot of them have already... I'm hoping a lot of them have already gotten offers from other things. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, moving beyond that, um, we have some update, slight update about Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Uh, Matthew Lillard is saying that filming is beginning in October, uh, hoping to be in theaters December 5th, 2025. Uh, if you didn't mm-hmm. see the first movie, it's fun. It's a fun movie. Like, Five yeah. Nights at Freddy's, whatever. If you don't care about the game series, you don't have to. If you do, there's some really fun little uh, Easter eggs in there uh, and a, an incredibly obvious cameo. Um, <laughs> uh, but no, it was a fun little fun little thing. I was excited when they... I was excited that it did as well as it did because I wanted more is really all mm-hmm. it was. Um, there's so much that they have in that franchise and I'm excited for them to weave the stories of all of it together. Um, yeah. Yeah. And expand on that lore a little bit more, too. Mm-hmm. So, um, beyond that, there was one other thing I was going to say, and now I cannot remember it. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, THQ Nordic had a little event thing. Do you follow any of this at all? I did not. I know they had a big sale on Steam. Ooh, you're getting robot Hold on. Oh. Sorry. It's okay. I just don't know why you did. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they did have a big thing. Um, oh my god, THQ Nordic. You're, it's your own channel. Make it so I can easily read what the fuck you posted about recently. <laughs> Ugh, fine, I'll go somewhere else. Hold on. Let's go somewhere else for THQ Nordic. Um, god damn. Why is it so hard to find news now? <laughs> no idea, dog. Thank you. At least this one. Wait, nope. None of this is the whole thing. Show me everything. <laughs> I think that's what bugs me is when you can't easily find everything shown at the showcase. Mm. I guess because it was a smaller showcase that it wasn't as. Yeah. All right. Thank you, PlayStation dot blog. Um, <laughs> I don't know most of this stuff. We got a new game coming, Eternal Life of, Go- of Goldman, a uh, 2D adventure platformer. Um, what's that look like? That look cool? Oh, it's loud. Well, it's pretty. Actually, this looks fucking cool. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to throw in the... Have the whoosh, whoosh. Uh, kind of has like a old old style animation look to it. Um very interesting. I, I feel like animation style, it it's not trying to be Cuphead, but it is trying to be like, hey, we can make stuff look mm-hmm. look of an older age kind of thing. Um, yeah. Man, this looks a lot of fun. Holy shit. Uh, I had no idea about this game, and now I'm fucking excited as hell for it. Um, we got another look at Epic Mickey Rebrushed, which is the remake or remaster, eh, remake remaster of the Ep- Epic Mickey game. Um, Mm -hmm. which was a really cool idea with horrible camera settings. And that killed that game for me. Um, We got the announcement of Wreckfest 2, uh, Titan's Quest 2, Gothic 1 Remake. People are super fucking excited for this one. Um, Way of the Hunter Lintukoto? Lintukoto Reserve? Why do I have to be of... H to look at this video. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, it's DLC. Okay, it's a DLC for Way of the Hunter. Uh, there is a new game, new tale from Tarsier Studios, which is 
one I meant to look up because oh yeah yeah Little Nightmare people that's what I thought mm-hmm. um, they got a new game whether it's Little Nightmare three or something else who knows um, and then the last big thing that people are talking about the most uh, we are getting we got a hint our first teaser of a new Dark Siders game. Um, mm-hmm. what it's going to cover, what kind of gameplay it is, because all of them have been different. Who fucking knows? <laughs> yeah. If you had, okay. I mean, if you had to have a new Darksiders game that was a different gameplay style than the last one, what would you go with? Yeah. Mm, yeah, probably go with something similar to Neon White. Yeah. Uh, just like a free running puzzle game. Um, oh, okay, okay. I would actually get behind that because I hate these games. <laughs> well, Even the one that's like Zelda. That. Well, that's the first one. The first yeah. one is more Zelda than any other game. Oh, that's what, yeah. Um, I think I bought all three of these when they were on sale. Yeah, so it takes, in line with that showcase, I did a bit massive sale on Steam. Yeah. Um, and so I got all three Darksiders games for like 18 bucks. <laughs> is there not a fourth one? Um, no. So there is, well, technically, yes, there is. I Yo, Genesis. Say. Yeah. Genesis is the fourth one. And that um, one is the uh, more Diablo-like one, right? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I don't really know what's in store for another Dark Siders because they've covered all four horsemen. And that was kind of the thing that they wanted to do. <laughs> what if the last one is all four horsemen together? That would be interesting to see because they've all been completely different play styles from one another. <laughs> I mean, Darksiders was that kind of, you know, it was an action game with some free-roaming elements in it. Um, Darksiders 2 took away most of the free-roaming stuff and just went full-on, like, Devil May Cry-style action to the point Mm -hmm. you don't even get a block button in the game. Um, Darksiders 3 was kind of somewhere in between with a whole lot more annoying platforming for some reason. Um and Darksiders 4 was a top-down, almost bullet-hell style shooter, so... <laughs> um, but yeah, I was able to get... I don't know if they're still on sale, but I was able to get all three of them for about 18 bucks, And these mm-hmm. are the remasters as well. Okay. <clears throat> That's cool. That's cool. Um, all right. Well, I, I didn't really have any other news besides the last thing we're going to get to uh, brought up. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about before we moved on? Hmm... No, I don't think so. Everything's, this has not been a massive news week. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So, I mean, we had San Diego Comic-Con. Um, oh, we did have confirmation of a Doctor Who spinoff um, called The War Between Land and Sea. It'll be like a, it'll be a five-part miniseries. I'm kind of excited for that, uh, especially because I've heard rumors of them bringing back past characters, and I'm always a fan of past characters coming back. Um Anyway, uh, the last big thing we're going to talk about, and if you know anything about what's going on in in the entertainment and what's number one or one of the big releases right now, and there's also a spoiler cast out right now, um, hopefully right now, I'll try and plan this out, <laughs> um, uh, we got all the Marvel news that we could uh, during San Diego Comic-Con. Um, so we're just going to run through some of the stuff we now know, learn some stuff in general. Um, whoop, if I can type things correctly, that would be great. Sorry, the thing I had open, it looks like I accidentally may have closed. Um, again, what is with not putting things together anymore? I hate... <laughs> Right, like, I don't know. Do you need a link? Because I have a link. Which one do you got? Which one are you using? It's just from the Marvel website. Oh, the biggest news from San Diego Comic Con? Oh, no. I'm not doing San Diego Comic Con. I was just looking up this. <laughs> what is this? Oh, I can't open that without showing it to everyone. Send it in regular Discord. Oh. <clears throat> Like in the podcast chat and regular Discord. This was just the lineup, so I didn't get lost. <laughs> I can't open that for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. That's, 
type in the URL, but that's where I got the lineup from. I don't know anything about San Diego Comic Con. Oh, okay. I didn't know the reveal that. that happened. Well, we'll get to there. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's really the main thing, to be honest, besides mm-hmm. the lineup. Um, yeah. Okay. San Diego Comic Con happened. Uh, ooh, people were were very lucky to watch the entirety of uh, Deadpool and Wolverine just bef- so they literally for the panel they showed that and then they mm-hmm. had the Q&A kind of thing afterwards so they brought out all the special guests that we will not spoil um, I thought that mm-hmm. was a really cool idea that was the day before that was not the same day as the main Marvel panel but during the main Marvel panel we got a little bit of what is coming they announced that they were really only going to focus on three movies um, so they talked more about Captain America, Brave New World, uh, talked about Thunderbolts, and um, talked about and gave an actual title to the Fantastic Four movie. It's now called Fantastic Four First Steps. Um, I believe, so the Fantastic Four has not been, they literally just started filming like Tuesday. Um, mm-hmm. They showed off new new footage for both Captain America and Thunderbolts. Um, and then the big, big thing was the announcement that the Russo brothers were coming back for Avengers 5 and 6. 5 and 6? Nope. Yeah. Well. 6 and 7. 6 and 7. Never right? Heard. Avengers. Ultron. No, no. 5 and 6. Yeah. 5 and 6. We're good. And because it's... And yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, Infinity. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Math. <laughs> um... We talked about how good I did in school before. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're coming back. We've got uh, Avengers Doomsday, and then a year later, Avengers Secret Wars. Now, obviously, Doomsday. Yeah, making this like a big reveal, like nobody's already heard about this. But hey, some people mm-hmm. might not have, and that's a possibility. That's actually surprising when something big happens like this and people don't know about it. Um, but whatever. Uh, obviously, we're getting Doctor Doom. Um, which version of Doctor Doom? Who knows? People are really fucking arguing about it right now online. Um, mm-hmm. But the big reveal is that taking over in this version of Doctor Doom as the role, it's not the guy from Nip Tuck. It's not whoever the fuck <laughs> played him in the. Who played him in the second series? The second uh, Fantastic Four. Attempt. Let's see. The damn movie. 2015 film. Oh yeah, 2015. I gotta I forgot that I have to do that. Toby Kebble. I don't know who you are, Toby. <gasps> I do know who you are, Toby. What did they do to you? <laughs> Poor Toby Kebble. Poor Toby Kebbell. You were in the worst, one of the worst superhero movies of all time. Um, anyway, for some reason, I am I am cautious. I don't know if I'm optimistic. <laughs> I'm definitely not pessimistic. This guy um, always gets cast as bad guys. <laughs> but Robert Downey Jr. is coming back into the Marvel Universe or Marvel Cinematic Universe, to play Doom. Uh, Mm -hmm. Now, the way it sounds is that he will be... I don't know if they've said that he's going to be unveiled in Fantastic Four. Uh, Fantastic Four will be part of Doomsday and uh, Secret Wars. Doom will be a major player in both of those. Whether or not... No, you know what? No, I'm, I'm calling it here. There's no fucking way, and if it is, this is when I'll get upset. <coughs> Excuse me. There is no fucking way that Robert Downey Jr. as Doom, his Doom, will be the MCU's main Doom. Um, I, I believe. Doubt you doubt? You doubt what? I doubt that he will be. Yeah, State exactly. <laughs> I'm like, no, no. Mm, that's where you'll piss me off. If you bring him back and he is he's doomed now, um, I'm like, fuck you. Uh, I do see him playing him through the both of the movies. And by the end of these two movies, 
we get a Marvel Cinematic Reboot. Um, not in a, all right, we're going back to number one for everything. Kind of. Um, we'll get legacy numbers on all the movies. Um, <laughs> but Captain America 1, number, legacy number 6. Uh, <laughs> um, but no, I, I really think that the, the idea is we're ending the multiverse saga. And the best way to end the multiverse saga is to bring all of the multiverse back into one timeline. Um, yeah. AKA one parent company owning all of the IP except <laughs> for fucking Spider-Man. Um, <laughs> cause they won't let him go. I'm sorry. No. And I'm not helping. I'm going to go see fucking Venom. I, I'm going to buy tickets day one. Um, mm-hmm. but I, I, and I'm okay with this. I'm okay with them bringing him back. If he is the one that is ending like, yes, infinity saga, done and over with and he had his big huge sacrifice sending off the what is known as the mcu as the Mm -hmm. end cap for the mcu ending it with robert downey jr i also think that's okay yeah um but with that we were giving given an updated slate um for the movies i'm gonna just run through the quick timeline um Captain America, Brave New World, February 14th, 2025. Nice Valentine's Day movie. Uh, Who doesn't love a nice Captain America for Valentine's Day? Um, Thunderbolts, 2025, May 2025. Um, Mm -hmm. That's still Thunderbolts with an asterisk. We don't know what that asterisk is. I don't think they told (laughs) the people in the audience. I have not seen anything. But it's important in some way. Um, Well, with the reveal at the end of the Captain America, Brave New World trailer, that... That raises a question mark about Thunderbolts. Mm. Who knows? Um, Fantastic Four. I mean, it's not really a reveal. It's a, the trailer's been out for long enough. Red Hulk is in it. We know this. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh yes, the movie poster currently is his hand gripping the shield. <laughs> that's one of yeah one of the posters right now. Yeah. yeah. Um, Fantastic Four First Steps is supposed to be coming out July twenty fifth, twenty twenty five. Uh, Blade is still on the release schedule. For November 7th, 2025. If that works, I'm excited. If they have to push it, I'm okay. Just don't fuck it up. Don't not release Blade. If you put this out, if you put out the news that Blade is happening and you never make it, you will be murdered. The entirety of Disney is, or Marvel Studios, done. Sorry, Kevin. Marvel, if y'all don't make Blade, you racist. (laughs) That's all there's to it. How you can't? How could they be racist? Captain America is black now. Yeah, fuck. Uh, <laughs> there, there's a whole different vibe between Blade and Captain America, and y'all know it. <laughs> oh God! Oh, uh, real quick. Um, I don't know if you caught this. The tra- during the trailer for Captain America before um, Wolverine De- or Deadpool Wolverine, they changed the scene, the trailer, and removed the shot. Of uh, the president be having an attempted assassination, uh, <laughs> I, I told Kim in theater. I leaned over and I'm like, "Do you notice they changed the trailer, by the way?" And they're like, "What are you, what are you talking about?" I'm like, "Remove the shot," and they just were like, "Jesus fucking Christ!" <laughs> um, yeah. All right, that's 2025 lockdown. We don't know the TV shows. We will find out about the TV shows this upcoming mm-hmm. week. Will I add anything to this before I release it? Probably not. I might do a video on some other thing or talk about during another stream. Whatever. Um, D23 is happening, and that's usually when they focus on all the TV shows, which I'm very Mm -hmm. excited for, um, for both Marvel and uh, Star Wars. Yeah, that's that other thing they own. (laughs) Moving forward. We got an untitled project, uh, February 13th, 2026. May 1st, 2026, which is the usual time for the big Avenger movie, um, Avengers Doomsday, Untitled, mm-hmm. again, November 6th, 2026, uh, and then nothing until May of the next year, when that's May 7th for Avengers Secret Wars, which is, that's, who knows, could be the big reboot, uh, and then we got two more, Untitled, in July, on July 23rd and November 5th, um, what those could be... Who knows? We could slot some in idea like you can think of. Um, hold on. I had that open and now I close it. Um, let's see what those most likely could be. So we got 
Let's see. Keep, let me... No, stop doing that. Do this. Jesus Christ. You go there, and then... You go there? Is that where I had you? It's not where I had you, but I'll make it work. Whatever. Um, <laughs> too many things open, man. I don't know why I do this to myself. Um, cinematic Universe, we get down to these movies, and we have some announced movies that have not happened yet. Uh, we have... Armor Wars, which was originally supposed to be a TV show, and is now a... Uh, that word, a movie. Um, <laughs> brain just blank there. Uh, Shang-Chi sequel. Uh, mm -hmm. Spider-Man sequel. Uh, and if they have untitled X-Men, I don't think X-Men's happening until 2028 at the earliest. Um, but yeah, that's really all we know is still announced in, in production, or at least in someone's mind it's being produced um so who knows what's coming next uh i don't know what do you want to see out of all those those we got so let's see if we get rid of three of them mm -hmm. we got one two oh that's really only one what <laughs> un what unannounced marvel movie would you be excited for an unannounced marvel movie yeah because obviously one of these is not announced, unless it really is Armor Wars, Spider-Man, Shang-Chi, and X-Men. And I'd say X-Men is either that November or July. Yeah. I mean, I don't really know. That's the thing. I want... There, there's just a lot of stuff wrapped up in Marvel that we haven't seen on the silver screen yet. At least not not good stuff. <laughs> we, we've seen a lot of... A lot of poor attempts at certain things um, and a lot of attempts at, you, you know, inserting things into other IPs. Um, yeah, I just, I, I really don't know that much. I, I guess I would like to see John Berthall's Punisher come to the silver screen, honestly. Does he work great as a TV actor? Absolutely. But I think, I think how well his series did, like that's an actual shot at, mm -hmm you know, elevating that a bit. <laughs> okay. I know he is, I believe, supposed to set to return in some way for uh, Daredevil, which mm -hmm. uh, already has, I believe they've already started production on season two, um, which awesome. The fact that they believe in it that much, that they're, they already finished one season and are doing another one. Um, yeah. That's a good thing. Um, obviously, I, okay, let's be honest. There's a big elephant in the room within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, and it's not the thing you're thinking of. It's not a Kang-shaped ele elephant in any way. <laughs> We're done. It's done. Season 2 of Loki had a nice little nip it in the bud kind of off offhand comment that allows them to move it on. Move on from that. Um, possibly, hey, maybe they can do something else in the future after the multiverse. But that wouldn't make sense because that's kind of the driving force behind the storyline. Um that is <laughs> how bad. So D Dave on the on the podcast on the spoiler cast talked about how he just this is the first movie that Wolverine Deadpool first movie he's liked in like however long. Um, mm -hmm. I don't agree with that. There have been a lot of movies in the last couple of years that I've really enjoyed, um, movie wise. In my opinion, probably the weakest of them all was quantum mania. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. It was the weakest. It was also the most out of place. And we know yeah. that because the original schedule was for it to come out after the Marvels. It was supposed to be the Marvels. I'm not sure if it was supposed to be next, but I believe it was supposed to be the third movie of the year. I thought, I think pretty sure it was supposed to be Marvels guardians three and then quantum mania. Um, mm -hmm. That switch messed up multiple things. One, you led the year with a not great Marvel movie. And two, you had the Marvel's release after, in my opinion, the weakest Marvel property yet, which was mm -hmm. Secret Invasion. Yeah. Secret Invasion takes place the only meant the only way that it makes sense in any way is that Secret Invasion takes place 
after the Marvels. The events yeah. of the Marvels have to lead into the events of Secret Invasion. Um, because otherwise it makes no fucking sense. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's also just... The the unfortunate fact of the matter is something like I talked about before, is the Marvels was dogged before release for obvious reasons. Yeah. And I mean, it, it had oh. the issue of that with the stupidity of, oh, I can't... The movies can't start women. Um, or women of color. Um... You had that going against it, on top of the fact that this movie was releasing during the writers and a writer and actor strike, so nobody could do any fucking promotion for the movie. Um, mm -hmm. So th that movie was dead on arrival, unfortunately, without any reason for it, because I fucking love that movie. Um, I don't remember what you how you felt about that movie. I'm sorry, which movie? I don't know why that Marvels. sneeze ejected my brain. Um, <laughs> I, I actually quite enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed it for a lot of the cinematic reasons. Um, well, I, I don't know how to how what term there is for this. But I enjoyed it because a large part of it was this just goofy musical number <laughs> that I thought was fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, another part of it is, again, that we have the girl who's playing... Uh, fuck, what's her name? Why can't I remember? Kamal Khan, Imani. Yeah, um, she like this is she came out of nowhere to play this character. Um, this was not Perfect. like she's not a trained actress in any sense of the word, and she still manages to get up there on screen with players like Brie Larson, who's got a wealth of acting talent in history, um, and just do it. And I mean, I'll be perfectly honest. You said women of color earlier, but honestly, there's like a special. There's a special kind of hatred that certain people who criticize Marvel have for Brie Larson in particular. Oh, yeah. Um, and I, I'll i admit, I bought into some of it before. I watched more of it in context and was like, no, these Jokers are they're, they're completely off base. Waste um, of space. If I think... Do I think Brie Larson is like the best actress in the world ever? Absolutely not. Um, do I think she's competent enough to play Captain Marvel? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> and she's I, I love her and other things um yeah we like Kim and I Kim and I both have just that's a that's a mutual uh celebrity crush for us mm -hmm. but uh beyond that I mean I I, I did enjoy the movie <laughs> yeah um yeah uh, that movie did something that I was I that movie did what I wanted I wanted out of Marvel movies this far in, which was it existed within the existing universe. Um, yes, mm -hmm. people complain that, oh, the, the villain wasn't that, that great. There are not that many great villains. A lot of them are one and done. Some of them should yeah. not be one and done. We all agree on that. Um, mm -hmm. But there's a reason why you have the, the standouts that we do. Um, we try, wait, <laughs> Ghost is still alive, all right? I know. Bring Ghost, him back. Ghost, Ghost is coming back. Ghost is one of the Good. Thunderbolts. Okay. She's getting a whole new costume, along with Taskmaster. Oh, give her a fucking movie. Well, she's a part of a movie. Give her her own movie. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, as we're talking right now, the first teaser for uh, Last of Us 2... La sorry, Last of Us Season 2 just released. <laughs> I'm about to say. <laughs> Last of Us 2 been out for a while. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Damn! Anyway. Oh, this looks fun. Comes out next year. Yes, there I are villains fun. that should have never been one and done in the MCU, and it's sad that they were. Um, I mean, I'll be honest: is I won't say Modok's like a popular character in Marvel, but they kind of did him dirty. <laughs> they did. Um, I again, Quantum Mania, just not great. <laughs> um. But no, I I don't know. I have not. I am not in the doom and gloom uh, mm -hmm. side of Marvel fans. Um, like I found the jokes within other things, um, within other recent media, uh, entertaining, but only because I don't think of it that way. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's fucking weird. I don't understand. I, I don't want to get into hatred of fanboyism and just fandoms in general. Fandoms suck. Look, <laughs> they I've can be got, great. 
I've already got all the like hypercritical hater vibes in me already. I really don't need people to add to that. Like I cannot go to movies without looking for shit now. And it's not because I'm looking for something to hate on the movie about. It's just like, I, I have fucking autism. That's all there's to it. <laughs> 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 Jesus, um, I was going with something. So I was going to say something, but I can't remember because you brought up autism. Um, uh, oh, I was thinking of shitty fandoms and like the opposites of that. Um, mm-hmm. And really, it's the theorist sides of fandom fandoms that I enjoy. Um, yeah. If you don't know, currently there's a brand new Gravity Falls book out called The Book of Bill um, that mm. has an ARG link to it that people are, are I don't know if we've gotten any further in it, but um, we may be getting new Gravity Falls after the entire story was finished and we were told by Alex Hirsch that he was done and told the story he wanted. Um, but hey, if we get more, I'm not going to be upset. I mean, I wouldn't be. I'm not a huge fan of Gravity Falls, but I know it was That's a great show you. from everything I've heard. <laughs> How dare you! I know you. it's great. <laughs> I know it's a good show from what I've heard. Um, and uh, you know, it's one of those things I got in my backlog. It's just another thing where it's like I got to sit through a show. Um, not to say I wouldn't enjoy it, but it's only, hey, it's only two seasons, mm-hmm. thankfully. Um. No, if if it does turn out that that's like what the ARG leads to, that's wonderful. I'm happy for every fan of that show. Um, if there is anything I wanted out of a cartoon, it was honestly more Steven Universe, but um, <laughs> they kind of closed that trap. Um, well, you say close that wanted... trap, Cartoon Network just straight mm-hmm. up fucking canceled them. Well, yeah, just yeeted it. Um Definitely will want my little more My Little Pony stuff from Friendship is Magic Universe because they did kind of continue that. Um, and then it's just the way Hasbro is. Like, if we can't make toys out of it, if people aren't buying toys, we're not making a fucking cartoon. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it sucks that that happened, but at least IDW picked up the comic run and that's been going strong. Reminds me, I got to call Third Eye again and say, hey, can you ship me another massive box of comics? <laughs> um... <laughs> um <clears throat> But uh, yeah, I'm just if that's what it leads to, I'm I'm happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, good cartoons. They're great. I love it. We need more of them. Let yeah. people make cartoons. Companies, stop cutting animation. Stop it. No, well, stop they're it. They're waiting for you know. They're waiting for the 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 a bomb to drop in a sense, which is as soon as. AI is up to snuff and can fully automate, you know, entire animated shows out of thin air. That's what they're praying for. <laughs> no, I'm um, wait, waiting for that to crash sooner than later. Oh, it probably will. Like, the there's actual, like, now we know that there are actual technological limitations that you just can't keep up mm-hmm. with the development of AI. Um, so it, it probably is just never going to happen in the way people think it will, was. I agree with Dave, like, the stuff we saw about AI video was indeed kind of scary. And the things I've seen come out of AI video since then have been kind of scary. Um, and the prol- proliferation of using AI art tools is also kind of scary. Um, yeah, because there, I see it in more and more places now. I was going to say, there are aspects of AI that can be used well mm-hmm. and not destructively. Um, yeah. I say destructively as in to the art artist community or art community in general. Um, mm-hmm. thankfully I say this in a, I don't know how to put it, but, uh, th- thankfully some, some AI, I can't remember who it was, was found out that, uh, they were using, um, I believe it was both Disney and Nintendo content to feed their AI, uh, yeah. those are two people you do not want to fuck with. Uh, <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. if Disney and Nintendo merge together to uh, destroy AI, I'm in, I'm all on all on board. Well, uh, Disney and Nintendo will definitely do it to protect their IP. And like when they say "sue the pants off of you," like that's actually what Disney and Nintendo together intend to yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, as I've said before, Nintendo of America exists to sue. That's yes. about it. 
It's basically a lawyer's office. So. <laughs> All but, right, neat. Is there anything else you want to say before we head out? Um, not a lot. That's not completely off topic. So no. <laughs> Oh, you got you got off topic stuff to talk about. Yeah, it's just it's things that I'm ha- it's recent events that I'm both happy and perturbed by, but not something for this podcast. <laughs> mm, okay, mm. okay. Um, all right, yeah. Well, let's do because it's just me and you, so we both have things. Dave mm-hmm. never, rarely, sometimes food, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um. Time for some no context recommendations. Yep. Nate, what you got? So I have to put some context mm-hmm. on this one, as advised by Chris earlier, because elsewise, if you Google search it, you come up with a million results that are not related yeah. to this at all. Um, but from the universe of Vampire the Masquerade, I am asking you to look up Libon. <laughs> all right. That is L A I B O N, by the way. Libon. <laughs> uh, and I. Uh, no contextually, no contextually recommend. Uh, never stop blowing up. That's it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, never stop blowing up. Here goes Nate for the Google right now. <laughs> it's it's automatic at this. Oh point. yeah, I mean I get it. It's understandable. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> ooh no, don't do that. I gotta have this open. Um, anyway. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Space Time Taco. As always, if you like what you see, what you hear, what we do, follow us on all the social media. Just search Space Time Taco. Uh, you can find me everywhere at Time Lord Burrito. You can find Nate on Instagram at a little teapot eighty nine. Uh, if you want to help support us, rate and review this podcast. Join us on Patreon to access unedited content, spoiler cast, including a brand new spoiler cast for Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, with me, Nate, and Dave, uh, and more. Not more people on that one, just more content in general. Uh, <laughs> follow us on YouTube, <laughs> subscribe on Twitch, and remember if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime. That's the only way we want you to subscribe on Twitch currently, uh, because fuck them. Otherwise, uh, you can also donate directly on Ko-Fi, in the link below, uh, as well as, you know, support us other ways through our throne wish list and get us some fun stuff to fix up the office, maybe help with audio content, digital content, stream decky kind of up and shit, just making things better. Anyway, we love you. Thank you. Go inside and play video games. <laughs>